Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. For premium picks, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I think this Richland Provotnikov Mike Alvarado fight that's set for this weekend in Colorado is going to be much better than advertised. Right? I think Richland Provotnikov is very underrated. I think Mike Alvarado is a much harder puncher than the fact that his four of his last five fights have made it to the 10th round. I'm expecting fireworks. First, let's talk about Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach is in the corner of Richland Provodnikov. Might not be there at the fight because Freddie is helping Manny Pacquiao train for Brandon Rios. But understand, Freddie Roach has been intricately involved in Richland Provodnikov's preparation. Now, you need to view Freddie Roach as one of the few trainers in the sport of boxing who really help their fighters below the waist, right? With their foot speed, with their footwork, with their ability to move around the ring, right? The one thing I've noticed with the wild card gym is that fighters seem to, after they join with Freddie Roach, suddenly move around the ring a lot better, right? Roach seems to make adjustments to the fighter's center of gravity. And whether it's Amir Khan, and keep in mind, if you want to see pre-Roach Khan, look at the Breedis Prescott fight, right? You wouldn't even know that Amir Khan had above average foot speed, right? Whether it's Amir Khan, whether it's Manny Pacquiao, Right, who started his career without Roach. Whether it's, more recently, Miguel Cotto. You see these guys, they sign up with Roach, and then suddenly, they're doing fast break boxing. Right, suddenly, it's showtime. Right, gone is the half-court offense. Now suddenly, it's full court. Now suddenly, Miguel Cotto is hovering around the ring. He's not just standing there getting hit like he was against Austin Trout pre-Roach, right? No, he signs up with Roach. Suddenly, he's in the ring with Delvin Rodriguez, and he's hovering. You're, you're watching the fight, and you say, wow, you know, Cotto's feet are back. Well, Cotto's feet are back because Cotto has signed up with a foot speed guru. That's what Freddie is. Now, even a slugger, like Rushlin Provotnikov is moving around the rain. Right? Has Timothy Bradley ever been backed up consistently like he was in his last fight, the fight before the Marquez fight, against Rushlin Provotnikov? Right? Provotnikov had Bradley backing up. Maybe the narrative on that fight is wrong. Maybe it's not that Timothy Bradley gave away his advantages and decided to trade with Richland Provodnikov. Maybe part of that narrative should be that Richland Provodnikov, who we view as having a big right hand and who's really in there to take you out, better than 60% KO ratio, maybe the real story is that Richland Provodnikov actually moved a lot better than expected and constantly had Timothy Bradley up against the ropes. Now, one of the hallmarks of Freddie Roach fighters is spacing. And understand it's very different than how other trainers do things, right? You'll watch a Floyd Mayweather fight. And Mayweather, and this is a skill, right? Adrian Broner, another guy. These guys get up against the ropes, and you know what? They're home. They won't move. The idea is, hey, I'm going to use every part of this ring. <laughs> now, granted, this is boxing on the top shelf. But uh, Mayweather and Broner, they'll be up against the ropes, and they'll just lean back on the ropes. They'll, they'll save their legs. They'll just defense themselves, and then they'll fight back. 
You remember where Victor Ortiz headbutted Mayweather? It was right in the corner. Mayweather, of course, was up on the ropes, knitting, whatever he was doing, right? Um, that's not a Freddie Roach fighter. Freddie Roach doesn't want his guys up on the ropes. I know from time to time you'll see a Manny Pacquiao wander over to the ropes when he was fighting Miguel Cotto. At the time, Cotto was not a Roach fighter. Pacquiao was. But that's rare. Rather, wild card fighters tend to be in the middle of the ring. If anybody's up on the ropes, it's the opponent. It's not the wild card gym fighter, right? That wild card gym fighter is moving around the ring, but they're doing so from the middle of the ring, right? Look deeper into Freddie Roach's background, and you're going to see that Freddie Roach trained under Eddie Futch. Eddie Futch was the most important trainer in Freddie Roach's life when he was a fighter. And understand, one of Eddie Futch's star pupils was Joe Fraser. One of the secrets with Joe was that you were on the clock in the ring. Joe didn't just have a big left hook. Joe moved and bobbed and weaved, right? So Joe would have taller men up on the ropes. Go back and look at the Joe Fraser-George Foreman fight, big George Foreman. You're going to see the fighter actually trying to get inside in that fight is Joe Fraser. Right? Foreman's the one pushing Fraser off. Well, here's what I expect, and here's the impact here on this fight. Right? Richland Provodnikov's going to move much better than any of us expect. Yes, he's a slugger. Yes, he wants to trade. Yes, he wants to brawl. But there's a method to the madness. Right? He's trained with Freddie Roach. He's going to be episodic. In other words... Wherever Rushlin is, the one place I know he won't be is with his back up against the ropes, right? That's not what Freddie Roach wants, right? Roger Mayweather, Floyd Sr., for them, it's okay. It's not okay for Freddie Roach. So, we're talking about Provodnikov moving around the ring, Right? He's going to be moving around the ring, then he's going to come inside. He's going to be methodically trying to cut off the ring on Mike Alvarado. Now, there's a height dynamic in this fight. You heard me mention Joe Fraser earlier. Understand that Provodnikov is three inches shorter than Alvarado. Right? This is almost going to seem like Ali Fraser. Right? Let me say this, too. The height difference, in my opinion, actually favors the shorter man. Because Provodnikov, if he bends at the waist, can come in low. He can have Mike Alvarado reaching for him. So here's the multi-million dollar question. Does Mike Alvarado have enough boxing skills to keep Ruslan Provodnikov on the outside? I don't think he does. You know, Brandon Rios against Mike Alvarado, and I'll concede Alvarado's the better boxer, right? Provodnikov is the better puncher, although they both have huge punches, right? But understand, against Brandon Rios, and hey, this is the rough part of the net. This is the rough neighborhood. I'm a Brandon Rios skeptic. I'd be Brandon Rios is really a basic straight-ahead fighter. Right against Brandon Rios, Rios landed 34% of his power punches against Mike Alvarado. That's a high number, 34%. And keep in mind, Brandon Rios is a straight line fighter, right? Rios isn't moving around the ring like a Freddie Roach fighter. Rather, Rios is a guy who's really in front of you trying to crack your eggshell. Right? He's a pressure fighter. He's always front foot. Well, all I'm saying is, Mike Alvarado wasn't able to keep Rios off of him. I know he won the last fight. I know I predicted he'd win the first fight, and guess what? I'm still wiping the egg off my face, right? Alvarado got stopped in the first fight, did redeem himself in the second fight. But understand, since Alvarado had a problem maintaining distance between himself and Brandon Rios, I'm expecting him to have much more of a problem 
dealing with distance between himself and Wishlin Provotnikov. Now, while four of Alvarado's last five fights have gone, have made it to the 10th round, right? He stopped Rita's Prescott in the 10th round. I understand that didn't go the distance. And while Richland Provodnikov's last fight went the distance against Timothy Bradley, right? Just like Alvarado's last fight went the distance with Brandon Rios, the bet I'm recommending here is to throw caution to the wind. Understand it's high risk. This is just for experienced gamblers, right? We're going to risk it. If we lose, okay. The casino keeps my money. I'm mentally prepared for that. Right? Won't be the first time it's happened. But the bet I'm recommending is to take both guys by KO. You're getting some pretty tasty odds. If you go to Odds Checker right now, you're going to see that Mike Alvarado by KO, you're getting 3-1 to one at some shops. Right? Rishlin Provotnikov by KO. And Provotnikov is the underdog in the fight. You're getting 7-4 to four odds at some shops. So here, if you hedge the two, whatever happens, you should be making a decent rate of return. And let's get real here. I've read the comments here online. I know people view gambling as a lottery ticket. They're expecting to make 100% return, 200% return, 300% return. Maybe that's how it is in your world, and I tip my hat to you. But from the seat in which I sit long-term in gambling, you're fortunate if you have a winning percentage of even 15%, right? You're fortunate. I'm talking about 15% above the VIG. You're fortunate, right? So here, the bet I'm recommending is both guys by KO. I think it's a spirited fight. I just don't see this fight going the distance. Neither guy is that defensively gifted. For example, you heard me say Rios landed 34% of his power shots on Mike Alvarado. Understand that Timothy Bradley landed 43% of his power shots against Richland Provodnikov. Also, what I want you to do is to look at the guys' faces following their last fights. I know that, you know, we talk in terms of who won the fight and stuff like that. But Mike Alvarado was cut and beaten up in his last fight. Just look at him. Look at the photos of him post-fight. Ruslan Provotnikov was beaten up after his last fight. The press focused on the fact that Timothy Bradley had a concussion and had issues. But understand Provotnikov himself is all marked up on his face. In other words, punches were landing. Both guys got hit, right? Both guys were beaten up. Mike Alvarado, in my opinion, was badly cut. Now, I know these guys fought in March. In my opinion, this fight is too soon after March in which both of these guys got tested and were in 12-round wars, right? This fight is too soon. Both of these guys are a little worn down. I believe that increases the odds that one of these guys gets stopped. I know six months seems like a long time. It's not in boxing. Think about the last time you had cuts like Alvarado had at the end of the Rios fight. How long does it take your face to heal? Look at the film of that fight. Look how many times these guys get hit. Right? All I'm saying is in a perfect world, these guys would have another six months to heal. In the promotional world of boxing, where you're trying to monetize momentum, right? These guys are back in the ring against very tough opponents. I'm expecting someone to get stopped. Let me also say this too. Brandon Rios is more of a volume puncher, right? You watch a Brandon Rios fight, he throws a lot of punches, it wears down the opponent, eventually the opponent cracks, 
down the road. Ruslan Provodnikov is a different type of puncher. This is a guy who can knock you out in one round. There's a moment in that uh, Timothy Bradley fight where Bradley goes down, gets back up, Hits the canvas again. It almost looked like Zab Judah against Costa Zoo in a different generation. Right? My point is, and I know Bradley says, oh, he pushed me down again. All I'm saying is, Timothy Bradley was so disoriented, and this is early in the fight against Richland Provotnikov, that his legs were gone. That's the level of Richland Provotnikov's power. If Provotnikov lands like Brandon Rios landed, I don't see this fight going the distance. I believe Provotnikov hits harder than Brandon Rios. Also understand, too, with regard to Mike Alvarado, I know the last fight went the distance against Brandon Rios. But you need to understand that last fight against Rios was a rematch. There was a certain level of familiarity. They had seen each other before. Now let's go back to that first fight. That first fight ended by stoppage. Now whether you thought the stoppage was warranted or not, I want you to consider the pacing of that first fight. It was fast paced. There was no way Rios Alvarado won was going to go the distance. No way. The guys were landing too many hard shots. Well here there's no familiarity between Alvarado and Provotnikov. In my opinion, that's going to increase the chances of this fight ending early. Right? Let me say this too. Understand that Provotnikov has sparred extensively with Manny Pacquiao. Right? He sparred with the guy who moves very well, has great legs. I'd say the best part of Pacquiao's game, quite frankly, is his movement, right? He moves very well. He has great legs. He's hard to find in the ring, right? But yet Provotnikov, over time, actually started, you know, moving against Manny Pacquiao and figuring out ways to get inside on Manny Pacquiao. There's a video up here on YouTube. Great interview of Freddie Roach, where Freddie Roach actually talks about how Provodnikov started making adjustments during their sparring sessions. Right? Provodnikov is adaptive, reactive. Now, my point is simply, if Provodnikov has been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao and has had to deal with trying to find Manny Pacquiao in the ring, and keep in mind, both guys are trained by Freddie Roach, right? I believe Provodnikov is not going to be that faced by Mike Alvarado's movement. In other words, this is really Fraser Ali, only the guy playing Ali doesn't move that well, right? Alvarado is typically the hunter, not the hunted. Right? As Mike Tyson used to say, and I understand others before him said it, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Right? Sooner or later in this fight, Mike Alvarado is going to get hit in the mouth. Sooner or later, these guys are going to start to trade. Both guys have knockout ratios of better than 60%. In my opinion, unlike their last fights, Someone's going down in this fight, right? Let me say, Provodnikov has a problem with slick, cute fighters, right? Timothy Bradley beat him. Demarcus Corley went the distance with him. Mauricio Herrera, who's slicker than most people realize, um, got the decision against him. Let me just say, that fight's a bit questionable. Teddy Atlas scoring the fight live had Provodnikov winning the fight. I myself had Provodnikov winning the fight. They gave it to Mauricio Herrera, fair enough, right? The point, though, is simply that, in my opinion, Mike Alvarado doesn't have that level of slickness. So this is going to be a gut-check fight. Alvarado is going to be fighting before his hometown fans. 
there's going to be pressure on him to trade back when Provodnikov cuts off the ring and starts to trade with him. Two guys with big punches, two guys with less than great defenses, right? High profile fight, both guys on the verge of stardom. I'm expecting fireworks. I'm expecting a stoppage. I'm not sure who wins the fight because both guys are very heavy handed. Neither guy has to wind up to throw big punches. But make no mistake, I'm expecting big punches to land. I'll be surprised if this fight makes it to the 10th round. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.